This was Seattle's version of the Summer of Love in 1967. Those are the people who grew up to be the liberals running our country's institutions. Mayors, cultural leaders, media executives, business leaders. Here's Seattle Today, where those self-identifying as liberal are idealistic protesters, full-time activists, anarchists. And they've taken over part of the city. How long do you think Seattle in those few blocks looks like this? I don't know. We could have the summer of love. Well, tell that to the police who was supposed to be in that precinct, though. It was really only a matter of time before the progressive left pushed their liberal leaders over the cliff. People are asking, where's the pushback against this mayhem from America's elites? Is this the result of smiley face liberalism? Monuments targeted across the country today include statues of U.S. presidents and the man who wrote the lyrics to our national anthem, the Star-Spangled Banner. Protesters have even begun their targeting of revered religious figures. Unipero Serra founded multiple missions in California in the late 18th century and was canonized by Pope Francis in 2015. But now the head of the American Museum of Natural History in New York has bowed to this pressure and offered to take down its iconic statue of Teddy Roosevelt. Based on their actions, it seems as though liberal elites don't have a problem with erasing history. Smart people, wise people, use their history in order to improve. Other kinds of people try to bury their history. In Brooklyn, residents are in despair about the widespread nightly fireworks bombardment. It took a drive-by protest at the mayor's residence to get Bill de Blasio to do something about it. Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams' solution to the firework deluge was to empower community groups. That is why I'm calling on the city of New York to empower cure violence to go into the community and talk to the residents about the dangers of fireworks. How did the capitulation come so fast? Well, it's hardly a revelation to blame our schools. In recent years, we've seen many examples where students have shut down speeches from conservative or dissenting thinkers. This mess was made possible by university presidents. When students proposed formal restrictions on words and speech in the 1990s, they caved. When liberal professors began denying tenure for conservative colleagues, they caved again. Groupthink took over the campuses. I'm resigning as president of the University of Missouri system. Students turned next on the same liberal professors who empowered their worldview. They accused them of racism, and again, their liberal colleagues folded there was barely a peep of resistance. Today, liberal tolerance, tolerance being their cardinal virtue, has degraded into rote acceptance of anything goes. The adults who emerged from the era of the summer of love claim to be defending evolving standards. What is clear now is there are no standards.